Hi everyone, my name is Titi JKFC Richard. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Please remember to subscribe to the YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so that if I share a video, you'll be the first to receive it. Today, before this video will end, as we started a series on partial differential equation, before this video will end, we will, I will take you through how to classify partial differential equation as having a constant or a variable coefficient. Then we will determine whether a function is a solution to a partial differential equation. Then after that, we will look at using direct integration in finding solution to a partial differential equation. This is a very interesting series. Please come with me. Okay, so uh, as I told you, the first thing we start off is the classification of PD as having a constant or a variable coefficient. This is, this is not anything difficult. It's very easy and I hope you, you understand it very well. So we said a PD is said to have a constant coefficient if the coefficient of all the partial derivatives are constant. If the coefficient of all the partial derivatives are constant. All the partial derivatives under, underline. So you check all the partial derivatives. If their coefficient is constant, then we say that PD is having a constant, uh, a constant coefficient. Then a PD is said to have a variable coefficient. If the coefficient of at least, at least, at least one of the partial derivatives has a variable has a variable. So you check all the partial derivatives. If at least one of them has a variable attached to it, then we say that the PD has a variable coefficient. So come with me. If we have a PD like this, look at it. So the first one here, the partial differential of uh, Z with respect to X twice, the partial differential of Z with respect to X, then with respect to Y. And the partial differential of z with respect to y twice. So we check, these are all partial derivatives. We check the coefficient of all the partial derivatives. So what are the coefficients here? It's one. The coefficient here, one. The coefficient here is six. However, it's constant. Six is constant. There is no any variable attached to it. This is not have any, any partial derivative. Then we say that this PD has is a constant, is a constant coefficient, is a constant coefficient P D E. I hope you get that. Just check all the partial derivatives. If their coefficient is constant, then we say the P D has a constant coefficient. Now let's check the second one. Look at this. This is a partial derivative, another partial derivative. So our attention will be on that. This partial derivative, the coefficient is constant, no problem. But however, check this partial derivative. It has a variable attached to the coefficient. So this PD is said to have a variable coefficient, a variable coefficient. So we say it's, it's have a variable coefficient. And we can say this PD is a, is a variable coefficient PD. Variable coefficient PD. Let's check the last one. Look at it. So this is a partial di uh, differential of Z with respect to X twice. Then tan X. Then a partial differential of Z with respect to uh, X. Then with respect to Y equal to 6. So our attention will be on the partial derivatives. The coefficient here is constant. We can even make it 7. No problem. Then it's still constant. Now let's check this. Look at this. A variable tan X. X is a variable. And it's attached to the partial derivatives. So it's, it is not having a constant coefficient, but rather a variable, a variable coefficient. So we can say this is a variable coefficient P D E. I hope you get that. This is not anything difficult. And I know that uh, you understand this as you proceed. The next thing we'll, we'll talk about is how to determine if a function is a solution to a PDE. So come with me. 
Yeah, so our next stop is how to determine if a function is a solution to a PDE. If a function is a solution to a PDE. If this is not anything difficult. However, you should know how to do your partial differentiation. So I want to revise your knowledge on partial differentiation again. So remember, we say we do partial differentiation if a function depends on two or more variables. If you can recollect that. And when we are differentiating with respect to one variable, the other variable or variables will be kept constant. If you have that idea, this is not any problem at all. So now we have a function on the board, a function f, which is dependent on two variables x, y, equal to 3x squared plus 2xy squared. If we want to find a partial differentiation with respect to x, what do we do? There is x here, so we differentiate this. We we'll get 9x squared. Remember that y will be kept constant. So on differentiate, this is linear. On differentiate, the answer is the coefficient of the variable. So we say 2y squared. And this is the partial differentiation with respect to s. Now the partial differentiation with respect to y will be what? Now there is no y here. You can see there is no y here. So the whole of this is constant. And the differential of a constant is zero. Now we differentiate this. This, remember, the x here is kept constant. So I want to differentiate this, what we get, we get 4xy. I hope you understand this. Now with this knowledge, we will learn how to determine if uh, a function is a solution to a PDE. So come with me. So uh, one way of determining it is that anytime you are asked to determine if a function is a solution to a PDE, what we need to do is check the PDE, check it, and see the partial differentiation that happens. So look at this. That means Z is differentiated with respect to X, then with respect to Y. So check that first. After that, what do you need to do? You need to come and differentiate the function with respect or in relation to how it was differentiated in the PDE. Substituting to the PDE, if both sides of the equation of the PDEs are the same, then we say that function is a solution to the PDE. If it is not, then we say it is not a solution. That's how we go about it. So take the function. So let's look at the function. The function is z, which is dependent on x and y, is equal to 1 c f x squared y squared plus x squared. So look at this. It was differentiated with respect to x first. So that will be del z over del x. So remember, we are differentiated with respect to x. So our y will be kept constant. So what do we do? Let's differentiate. See? So we differentiate this. What do we get? We drop to so 3 over 6. S square y square plus we differentiate this to s. Remember, we can polish this. What do we have? We can have half s square y square plus 2s. So this is our del, del z over del x. Now what do we do? We differentiate this with respect to y. Did you check that? Check it. We differentiate that with respect to y. So we are going to have so our del z over del s was equal to half x squared y squared plus 2x. So that's it. Half x squared y squared plus 2x. So now we found our um, one differentiate this again. This will become del square z over del s. So now with respect to the y. So del y, del s, del y. So now we won't differentiate this, we'll drop that. So 2 into bracket half x square y plus. Now remember there is no y here. So the whole of that is constant. So one differentiate a constant is zero. So we won't polish this what we have. We have del square z over del s del y equal to. So half, half 2 times half will be 1. So we will have x square y. 
So at the left, uh, the square z over the left, the y is equal to x square y. Now, this is this. So now we come and substitute into the PD. So what is the PD? The PD is this. So what is the value? What is the function of this? Is x square y. So now our x square y is equal to a, this x square y. Is it equal to this x square y? Yes. So we say the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Therefore, the function, the function is a solution. Is a solution to the PD. I hope you get this. I hope you get this. We we'll solve some more questions, maybe on a, on a exponential functions and trigonometric functions, so that you get a concept. Okay, so the next one. Is it very far further or not? The function u, which is dependent on s and y. Okay, x and t, sorry, which is dependent on x and t is equal to e exponent a squared t sin x. It's a solution to the pd a square, uh, the differential of u with respect to x twice, equal to the differential of u with respect to t, with respect to t. So what we do, uh, we take, what well, you check, first check the pd. So we have partial differentiation of u with respect to x twice. So first, check that. Then we also have a partial differentiation of u with respect to t. So we need to find those two. We need to find it. So now what's our function? Our function xt is equal to e exponent a squared t sin x. So now we want to find the partial differentiation of u with respect to x. Remember. This will be kept, t will be kept constant. So the whole of this is constant. The a square is also constant. So now I'll differentiate sine x, what do we get? We get cos s. So we have a e exponent a, a negative a squared t cos x. Cos s. Now remember, it's a partial differentiation of u with respect to x twice. So we differentiate again. So this, we differentiate again. We'll differentiate cos. What do we get this time around? It will be negative sign. Negative sign. Remember, this is also constant again. So we have negative e exponent uh, negative a squared t sign x. The differential, of course, is the negative sign. That can have this negative affected. So this is the partial differentiation of u with respect to x twice. With respect to x twice. So the next thing is partial differentiation of u with respect to t. Remember the whole of this will be kept constant because our attention is not with the x, it's with e. So remember how to differentiate exponential functions. Just differentiate the exponents and use it to multiply the function. We know all this. So I'll differentiate a squared t. It will be negative a squared because this is the coefficient of t. So we have negative a squared, repeat the function negative a squared t then sine x so this is a partial differentiation of u with respect to t so what do you need to do now now you come and substitute your differentials into the partial uh, differential equations if both sides of the equations are the same then we say the function is a solution to the pd if they are not then it is not so check it so we have our partial differentiation of u with respect to x twice as negative e exponent negative a squared t sine x and the partial differentiation of u with respect to t is equal to negative a squared e exponent negative a squared t sin x. What's our PD? What's our PD? This is our PD. Let's copy that. A square sus a square u sus with x x equal to sus with t. So when we substitute on both sides of the equation are the same, then we say that the PD 
And the function is a solution to the PD. So now let's check. So we have a square plus our partial differential of u with respect to s1 is here. So we, we put it there. So negative e a square t sin s must be equal to negative a square e negative a square t sin s. We can polish this. We can polish this. So we can get negative a square e exponent negative a square t then sin x must be equal to negative a square e exponent negative a square t sin x. Check. Check. We are the same. So we say the left hand side is equal to the right hand side. Therefore, the function the function is a solution is a solution to the p d e i hope you get that i hope you get that we'll source one more one more so that you, you will be abreast with it so we we'll solve the next question on that so it's a verify whether or not the function you which is depending on x and y is equal to sign x y is a solution to the pd to the square uh, del square u over the left square plus two del square u over the y square equal to u. So we'll verify that. So we'll first check the partial derivative. So this is partial differentiation of u with respect to x to y. So we need to get that. The partial differentiation of y and uh, u with respect to y to y. So we need to get that. And u here is the function. Is the function. So we don't have problems. So now let's find that our function is what which is dependent on x and y is equal to sine x, y. Remember when we are differentiating functions like this, we differentiate the angle and use it to multiply the differential of the, the transcendental function or the trigonometric function. We differentiate the angle here, we differentiate the angle here and use it to multiply the differential of the, of the transcendental function or the trigonometric function and repeat the angle again, if you remember that very well. So let's find the partial differentiation with respect to x. So differentiate this with respect to x. Remember y is constant, so one differentiate x here to be y. So we get y square, uh, y sorry, we get y. Then we differentiate sin. One differentiate sin, what do we get? We get cos. Then we repeat the angle, if you remember very well. Now the partial differentiation of this. So we differentiate this one more time. On differentiate this again, what we get? We get y again. We get y again. We use it to multiply the y, we get y squared. On differentiate this, we get what? Negative sign. That. Let's polish it. So we get negative y squared sign x y. For partial differentiation of u with respect to x y. Now we differentiate with respect to the y. Remember, our function x y is still sine x y. So partial differentiation with respect to, I mean, y. Remember, now x will be kept constant. So we we'll differentiate this, we we'll get x. So x, we we'll differentiate sine, we we'll get cos. So we we'll repeat the angle. We we'll differentiate again to get a second differential. So I want to differentiate this again, it will be x, so x squared. We differentiate cos, we get negative sign. Then repeat the angle. So this will be equal to negative x squared sign x y. Remember, remember, remember that this, this is, is the same as del square u over del x squared. So it's still that. Is so that so we don't have problem then then this is also del square u over del y square is equal to negative x square sine x y now what we do we come to our partial differential equation this one we copy it there so let's copy that we we'll get two del square u over del x square plus 2 
Now square u over del y square should be equal to u. Now we start to two. What's our del square u over del x square? Remember, is this. Is this. So that's what? Negative y square sine xy. So negative y square sine xy. Plus 2 our del square u over del y square is here. That's negative x square. Negative x square sine x1. And it should be equal to u. And what is u? This is u. That's it should be equal to sine x1. Let's polish this. You can have negative y square, uh, negative 2y square sine xy. Plus, okay, so minus 2x squared sine xy should be equal to sine xy. What do we do? We can factor out as much as possible what is common. Negative 2 is common, so negative 2 out. What to the left? You have y squared sine xy minus a uh, plus x squared. Because of this minus is out, that place will be plus. Plus sine xy should be equal to sine xy. Please, we can't do anything about this again. So this is the final simplification. So you can see that our left hand side is not equal to the right hand side. Therefore, the function, the function is not a solution it's not a solution to the pd the pd i hope you understand this i hope you understand this the next thing is that i will introduce you to direct integration for you to get that concept too okay so remember uh, when we have an equation like this a function like this and we are asked to find the derivative divided by ds from calculus one, we can have we can differentiate this four x then plus five. Remember the differentiation of the constant is zero. Then we need this function back. What do we need to do? Okay, we need to integrate, right? Yes. So let's integrate. So we integrate both sides. Or if we have the lower by the less, what do we do? We can find from our what is the name our od we can say we have this so we integrate both sides so we find the integration of this and must be equal to the integration of 4s plus 5 ds so we integrate we integrate dy what do we get we get y and should be equal to or we integrate this remember the integration rule you add one to the exponent and divide the, the result and divide the function by the result. So we get 4s square all over 2. Then the, uh, the integration of a what? A constant is the attachment of the variable to it. Then plus our constant c. Remember that. So what do we get in our share? 1, 4 divided 2, we get 2. So 2s square plus 5s plus the constant c. So we we'll get our function back. Remember, if the values of x and y are given, we can get this two. I hope you know this. You know this. Remember, this function is dependent on only and only one variable. Only one variable. What of if it is dependent on two variables? How do we integrate to get the function back? That is known as the direct integration. So come with me. Okay, so. Let's see how the direct integration works. Before we come to that, who we are doing direct integration? Remember, uh, this integration is in, is in finite. It's not a finite integration where we have, I mean, uh, a limit attached to the integral. So this is in finite. So there must always be a constant c. I hope you know this by now. There must always be a constant c. So, when we are, we are integrating with respect to x, the constant c 
will be a function of the other variable, maybe y. The one we are integrating with respect to y, the constant c will be a function of the other variable. Why is it so? Because when we are integrating x, the y is kept constant. And when we are integrating y, the x is kept constant. So when we integrate x, the constant of integration will be a function of y. And when we are integrating with respect to y, the constant of integration will be a function of the variable x. I hope you, I hope you get that. But let's see how that works. So now let's look at this function. Remember the function, this function is differentiated with respect to x twice. So to get a function back, you need to integrate with respect to x twice to get a function back. That's how it works. That's how it works. So we have our function here to be x plus 2y. So we integrate first with respect to what? x. So when we integrate first with respect to x, we reduce this, differenti this differential, the partial differentiation with respect to x to 1. So this, now, we differentiate x, we integrate x. When we integrate x, what do we get? Remember, 1, we add 1, so we get half x squared. Now remember, this is constant. When you, differentiate, when you integrate, sorry, when you integrate a constant, you just attach the variable to the whole, to it. So you have 2x, y. Then, plus, remember integration, the constant of integration. So the constant of integration will be a function of y. An arbitrary a constant of y. So this becomes our first integral. Now the second integral. Remember how we integrate this, we we'll get a function back. So u, which is dependent on x and y, will pop out. We are integrating again with respect to what? With respect to our x. So we add again. That will be uh, 3. We divide by the result. So we have 1 third times 1 second x squared. Then plus, remember, we integrate these two. Remember, 1 plus 1 here. This will be kept constant. 1 plus 1 will be 2 divided by the result. So we get x squared y. I hope you get that. We are know you know integration by now. Now, remember this is constant. This is constant of integration. Now what do we do? When we integrate constant, we just attach the variable to it. So x, f, y. So this, you can polish it to be this. So we have 1 over 6 x squared plus x squared y plus x times the cons an arbitrary constant of y. So this is our function where our f y is an arbitrary constant, arbitrary constant, constant of why? I hope you get this. I hope you get this. I'll do one more so that you get the understanding. Yeah, so there is another question. If the partial differential of z with respect to x, then with respect to y is equal to x where y, find the function z, maybe using direct integration. Using direct integration. Integration. Remember, the function which we are integrating with respect to. The, when we are integrating with respect to a certain function, the other one is kept constant. Have that one in your head. And the constant of integration will be in relation to the arbitrary constant of the other function, which we are not integrating with respect to. Very, very important. So now let's see. This is our partial differential equation. Uh, del square z over del x del y is equal to x square y. x square. Remember, we can write this as del square z is equal to is equal to x square y del x del y. What do we do? We integrate first 
with respect to what x with respect to x so what we are going to integrate is remember it we can't tell z because it's the differential with respect to z twice so we are differentiating with respect to x so dx will go away i hope you get that now the y will be kept constant remember that so all integrate is what you get the one third x cube y plus plus what is it the constant the constant of what the the constant of integration that's it it will be an arbitrary constant of y then our uh, del y what do we do next we integrate this again with respect to what y this time around i hope you get that so on differentiate we get z when we, sorry when we integrate we get z so we integrate with respect to y so what do we have now we integrate this with respect to y remember when we are integrating the x will be kept constant so what we have we have one third x squared remember this will be y square over 2 plus this is a constant so we attach the variable to it so y f y then plus the constant of integration the constant of integration now is an arbitrary constant of x so g of x so our z our function remember this is one over two it multiplies that one c x cube y square plus our y f of y plus g of s this becomes our function that's the function z which is dependent on x and y it will be this when you integrate this again check if you want to check whether it is a solution, differentiate this again, substitute into the function, you will get the same answer. The both sides of the function will be the same. Both sides of the equation will be the same. Then you know you are correct. Then you know you are correct. Now we'll solve another one for you to get a concept. But before we go that, before we do that, remember we can keep our, our del square z over del less del y. We can keep it here whilst we integrate it so that it will not confuse us. So that it will not confuse us. So the next question, you see that I can keep it here so that we integrate this, it won't confuse us. So when we are integrating with respect to x, we will only be left with del y. And when we are integrating with respect to y, we will only be left with del x. I hope you get that concept. So let's look at the next one. Okay, so uh, there is another question. Let's right? solve the PDEDs. That's the cube z over the x squared del y plus 18x y squared plus sine into bracket 2x minus y equal to 0 using direct integration. Using direct integration. So remember, let's come here. When we, are, when we integrate sine, we'll get negative cos. And when we integrate cos, we'll get sine. It's the opposite of differentiation. So please get that in your mind. When we integrate sine, we get negative cos. And when we integrate cos, we get sine. Have that in your mind. So let's keep this off. The cube z over del x square del y plus 18s y square plus sine 2s minus y equal to 0. So you can send this one there. Then you integrate. However, you can do the integration here after that you transpose. It's the same thing. You will get the same solution. Now let's go. So remember, we integrate with respect to x twice. Integrate with respect to y once. Get that in your mind. So let's integrate with respect to x first. So you have, when we integrate with respect to x, this will reduce to del square z over there, del z. Then it will now be left with only the partial differentiation with respect to x once. Now we come here. Remember, we are integrating with respect to x. Y will be held constant. Y will be held constant. So let's go. When we integrate this, remember we add, so we get 18 over 2 x square y square. Then remember the integration of this. You differentiate this, then you use it to divide the function, the differential of this function. So when we integrate this, when we differentiate this, 
Remember, y will be kept constant. So the differentiation of this will be zero. So all in differentiate this will get two. Remember that. The integration of sine is negative cos. I hope you know that. So we have negative cos 2s minus y. Then we use it to the, the differential to divide the function. I hope you know all these things. Yet I know you know it. Now let's go. Then to be equal to what? An arbitrary constant of y. Remember the constant of integration. What we have been saying plus c. But this one, since there are two variables, we say to be equal to an arbitrary constant of what? Of y. Remember we are integrating with respect to x. Get that very well. Now we do the integration again with respect to x. So the, this will reduce to become del z over del y. The, the del x will go away. Now, remember, this is this will be 9. This will be 9. So we can keep it like that. When we are done, we will polish it. Now we integrate this again. We add 1. That will become 3. We use it to divide. So one divide to be cancelled. So we have 18 over 6 s cube y square y is constant. So we come here. Remember, we will we'll differentiate this and use it to divide. Remember, when we integrate cos, what do we get? We integrate cos, we get sine. So we get sine 2x minus y. Then when we use the differential of these two to divide this, we we'll get 4. Equal to, when we integrate a constant, what do we get? We we'll attach the variable. Remember that. Remember that. Then plus another constant, another arbitrary constant of what? Another arbitrary constant of y. Oh, I hope you get that. I hope you get that. Now the next stop, we integrate with respect to y. So when we integrate with respect to y, the del z will become z, dependent on x and y. This will go away. First, let me polish this first so that you understand. Del z over del y. Now, 18 divided, okay, plus. 18 divided by 6. 18 divided by 6. That's 3, if I'm correct. S cubed. Y squared. Minus. Minus. Sine. 2X minus Y. All over 4. Equal to X. An arbitrary constant of Y. Plus another arbitrary constant of Y. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. So what do we do next? Now we integrate with respect to y. x will be kept constant. And remember, our constant will be an arbitrary constant of x. Since it's being kept constant. So let me rewrite this here so that we'll get a concept. So we have del z over del y plus 3s cubed y squared minus sine 2s minus y all over 4 is equal to x an arbitrary constant of y plus another arbitrary constant of y so now we integrate with respect to y then we we'll have our function now z which is dependent on x and y plus remember x will be kept constant now so we integrate this, we add 1 and divide. So we get 3s cubed, y cubed, all over 3. Then, remember, we are integrating with respect to y. The x here is constant. The x there is constant. So, remember, when we differentiate, what do we do? We differentiate this and use it to divide. So when we differentiate sine, what do we get? We get negative. When we integrate sine, we get negative cos. So negative cos. We repeat the function. Remember, when we integrate, when we differentiate this, we get 1. Sorry, when we integrate this, we get 1. Then we use it to divide. So we get negative 4. It's equal to the integral. 
So x will be kept constant. So since x will be kept constant, we can bring it out. Then the integral of the arbitrary constant of y plus the integral of the integral of the arbitrary constant of another y. Then plus our constant, our arbitrary constant of x now. I hope you get that. Remember, we are integrating with respect to x, with, uh, with respect to y. So we have an arbitrary constant of x. Let's rewrite that very well so that you get it. Now we have plus, we we'll polish this, three can divide. So we have x creep, y creep. Remember, minus negative times negative will be positive. But it's dividing by another negative there. So the negative will still remain. We have minus cos 2x minus y all over 4 is equal to x, the integral of an arbitrary constant of y plus the integral of an arbitrary constant of another y, then plus an arbitrary constant of x. I hope you get that. I hope you get that. So we can send this, or before we send, we say that since we don't know the arbitrary constant of the y to integrate, neither do we know this. We let it be equal to another, another arbitrary constant. We don't try to integrate. So we say let the integral of the arbitrary constant of y be equal to a constant of uh, an arbitrary another arbitrary constant of y. Then the integral of the arbitrary constant of y be equal to another arbitrary constant of what? of y. Now we substitute. We substitute. What we have? We have z depending on x and y plus x cube y cube minus cos 2x minus y all over 4 is equal to. Now the whole of this is this. So we have x u a function of y plus so let, we should let this be v so that it won't con confuse us. V. So v a function of y then plus an arbitrary function of x. An arbitrary function of x. So let's rewrite the whole of that here so that we'll get a concept. So we have z, x, y, z, x, y, plus, sorry, plus x squared, y squared, minus cos into bracket 2s minus y over 4 is equal to x, an arbitrary constant of y plus another arbitrary constant of y plus a cons an arbitrary constant of x. So we can transpose this so that we get a function. So our function is this depending on s and y will be equal to so I'm going to send this there to be positive remember that we have cos 2s minus y all over 4 then this will be minus x cube y cube plus s an arbitrary constant of y let me clean this side so that we won't go to another page plus an arbitrary constant of y plus another arbitrary constant of x then this becomes Function. It becomes our function. I hope, I hope you get that. You get that. Just play over the video and I know you will understand this. Please remember to play over the video and uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel so that if I post a video, you'll be the first to receive. Until we meet again, bye bye.